What's good, family? Happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to everybody. All of our new life family and friends, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in tonight, y'all. It's about to go up in a major way. Yes, it is <laughs> in a major way. Thank y'all for coming on. Happy Tuesday, everybody. I pray y'all day was good. I pray you was blessed today. Y'all about to be blessed tonight. Press that share button as you are coming on. And good evening again to everybody who is tuning in. Amen. Good evening, everybody. I see y'all coming on. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Y'all share the live stream uh, as we get ready to go into our discussion tonight, our lesson tonight. And let me take a moment just real quick, y'all, just to say thank you for Sunday. Uh, Sunday was off the hook, y'all. Thank y'all for showing me so, so much love for my birthday. Y'all know my actual birthday is tomorrow. Yes, the actual B-Day is tomorrow, y'all. But thank you for celebrating me on Sunday. I enjoyed everything. I read all the cards. I read every single note that was on that big old card that y'all got me. I got, I saw it all. So thank y'all again. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. And I'm just grateful that y'all are tuning in tonight. Amen. Grateful for y'all tuning in tonight. So again, if you're just now coming on, press the share button. And all I've been doing really just telling people thank you for Sunday because I am truly, truly blessed and grateful for how y'all blessed me and showed me so much love on Sunday, y'all. Y'all really showed me major love on Sunday. And I'm grateful for it. Amen. I've been eating banana pudding like crazy. Yeah. I got two banana pudding jaw Sunday. <laughs> Y'all know your boy blessed when you get two. I didn't just get one. I got two banana puddings on Sunday, y'all. I'm really, really blessed. Really blessed. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Actual B day is tomorrow, y'all. Your boy going to be. 41. 41. <laughs> yeah, your boy gonna be 41. Yes. Amen. Well, listen, tell me how your day was in the chat before we get started. Tell me real quick, how was your day? What was your day like? Tell us in the chat how your day was. Again, my day was fabulous in the office, y'all, getting stuff done, all of that. What's up, Uncle Junior? Good evening to you. Thanks for the birthday card and the gift, Uncle Junior. I appreciate it. Dina said her, her day was great. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we want to hear. And if your day wasn't great, we want to hear that too so we can pray for you, right? Pray that tomorrow is better. I see you. Your day was good. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Well, let's get into it tonight, y'all. Get into it tonight. Again, as you come on, press that share button for us, please. All you got to do is just press it. Just, just press the share button so that your friends, your followers, and your family can tune in with us as well. Tonight's going to be real good. I pray that you got notes or something to take notes with. Uh, tonight's going to be real, real good. Make sure you got something to take notes with. Again, we're just walking through David's story uh, slowly. We've been looking at kings, the kings of Israel, some of their triumphs and some of their trials. And we just kind of just been taking our time through this thing, just walking it out, y'all. All right. So we're going to take our time again tonight. But again, I really want you to share this live stream. Let's pray. God, we are grateful, Father, for tonight. We're grateful for this day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in this day. So very thankful, Father God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon our lives. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that something is said or done tonight, God, that would encourage us, that will push us, God, to have greater faith, that will even bring us closer to you. God, have your way tonight is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, everybody. Let's go to work. All right. So check this out, y'all. We are back in 1 Samuel chapter number 17, and we're looking at David, the victorious king. This is going to be part two because we looked at part one last Tuesday. So tonight is part two of David, 
the victorious king. Everybody put that in the chat tonight. David, the victorious king. So we're looking at him again tonight. And just for just so that we can catch people up with where we are, at this point in David's story, he has already been anointed the next king by the prophet Samuel. But guess what? He didn't start his kingship immediately. No, he did not sit in the king's seat immediately. Saul was still sitting in the seat of king at this point in the story. All right. And now, so here we are several years later and Saul's men were being threatened by this giant named Goliath. And so David so happens to see the tension and hear the threats and David decides to jump into action. So here it is. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. He says, don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight. Him. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go out there and put hands on him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. <laughs> All right, y'all see that? Church, I really wonder how frustrated David was knowing that here comes another person who has doubted him, right? How did it make David feel that somebody else did not believe in him? Because you all remember, right, just a few years back, David's own daddy didn't even consider him for the position of king when the prophet Samuel came to his house and the prophet Samuel did a talent search for the next king. David's own family didn't think he was good enough to shepherd the people. They felt like David should just stick to shepherding sheep, y'all. And now here we are, here comes Saul, rather, open up that same wound that David's family caused by not thinking that he was good enough to sit in certain seats. Are y'all with me? Now, mind you, David was one of the absolute best at shepherding sheep. All right. David would put his life on the line for the sheep. David would feed the sheep faithfully. David would lead the sheep in, in the right direction. And yet his family didn't believe in him to actually lead people, to shepherd people. Come here. Because is, isn't it amazing, y'all, that no matter what we do or what we achieve, there's always some people out there who just don't believe in us. Come on. Am I right about it? No, no matter how far you go, no matter how much you do, no matter how much you accomplish, no matter even what your history, your successful history tells us, there's always some people out there who just don't believe in us. Am I right about it? Come on. I'm talking about regardless of how successful you've been, regardless of your proven track record, regardless of your achievement, there's always somebody out there who thinks that we can't get the job done. Am I right about it? And I want to tell you tonight, family, that your job is not to prove them wrong. Your job is to prove God right. <laughs> you hear me? Your job is not to prove them wrong. Your job is to prove God right. Because God has always been right concerning you. <laughs> yeah. Your job is not to prove them wrong. Your job is to prove God right because God has always been right concerning you. God ain't never missed concerning you. Yep. When nobody else believed in you, God did. Yeah. God knew you had it in you. God knew you were destined for greatness. God knew we would be we would be the ones to rebuild your family's reputation. Come on, y'all. God knew you would be the one to break the generational cycle. God knew you were the one who were more than able to get the job done. So come here tonight, because here it is. I want you to let your motivation be to prove God right, not to prove them wrong. Let that be your motivation. Amen. Let your motivation be to prove God right, not to prove them wrong. Amen, somebody. Because check this out. It was God who gave me the chance in a career that I didn't even qualify on paper, but God saw something in me. Come on, y'all. It was God who gave me the opportunity to use my gifts when no one else would give me a chance. It was God who favored me with the project 
when others doubted my experience. Yeah, see, you're not going to catch me working this hard to prove some haters wrong. Come on. You're not going to catch me working this hard to prove somebody wrong, y'all. I'm working this hard to prove God right. <laughs> Come on. Somebody put in the chat, Lord, this is for you. Yeah, put that in the chat. Lord, this is for you. I'm not living to prove nobody wrong. I'm not going hard to prove nobody wrong. I'm not even trying to be successful to prove anybody wrong. I'm doing all of this to prove that you were right all along. You believed in me, Lord, when nobody else did. Come on, y'all. Come on, put that in the chat. Lord, this is for you. Now look at the text again, family. Look at the text again. Verse 33, let me put it up there for you. Look at the text. Look at it. It says, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> This is what Saul said to him. He said, there's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. Y'all see that? Y'all see that, right? Notice, come here. Notice that Saul never volunteers to fight Goliath. He just tells David what he can't do. Okay. Okay. Look at the text. It's right there on your screen. Saul never, ever raises his hand and say, David, I I'm going to go fight with you. Nope. He just tells David what he can't do. Anybody out there tired of people telling you what you can't do and they not even trying to do what you're doing? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Saul doesn't even look at teenage David and say, you know what? Let's go fight him together. He doesn't do that. He doesn't show not one ounce of confidence in David. He just tells David that he sounds ridiculous for offering to fight Goliath. Come here, because could it be that you've delayed certain decisions because of how others have projected their fears on you? Could it be? One more time. Could it be that you've delayed certain decisions all because of how other people have projected their fears on you. Hey Amen. Saul clearly doesn't think that David can win, and he tries to talk him out of it. He tries to talk him out of fighting Goliath. <laughs> and I'm wondering, y'all, I'm wondering, I'm just wondering, I'm wondering how many of us have been talked out of ideas. Okay, now you're cooking, Pastor. Yep. How many of us have been talked out of dreams, talked out of plans, talked out of confronting the giants in our own lives? Y'all not talking to me. Here, yeah, come on. How many of us have been talked out of confronting the own giants in our life that you are prepared to face all because other people thought it sounded ridiculous? Yeah, you, you was ready to do it. But somebody came along and said, you crazy. You can't do that. That's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> That's the same thing Saul is doing to David right now. David says, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Put me on the front line. Put me on the battlefield. Where are you at? I'm ready to do this thing. And here comes Saul projecting his fears upon David. And I'm guessing that some of you have allowed people to project their fears on you. <laughs> yeah, there's some stuff you had planned, some stuff you thought out. Some stuff you wrote down, some aspirations you had, but you didn't do it because that one person in your life projected their fears on you. Oh, my God. Now, remember, y'all, David, that he's a teenager at this time. Don't miss that. David is a teenager at the time, and he's not scared. <laughs> no, he ain't got no fear in him. <laughs> some of y'all remember what it was like to have that teenage courage. Were you not frightened at all by nobody or nothing? Come on, y'all. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm talking about. See, as a teenager, there were moments, talk back to me here, there were moments in your teenage life, y'all, where you thought you were invincible in certain situations. I mean, like you could just conquer anything. So maybe that's how David felt. Nevertheless, Saul thinks he's absolutely lost his mind. Saul said, this guy got to be crazy. He ridiculous for thinking that he can be Goliath. Amen. Y'all see that? And that's because what you see 
as an act of faith, others may view as a sign of foolishness. See, you can't expect everybody to have the kind of faith that you have. And some of you have gotten upset with people because they don't see what you see. But God didn't show them. Yeah, God did not show them what he showed you. And so sometimes what you view as an act of faith, other people view as a sign of foolishness. They done lost their mind. I know they don't think this idea going to work. They, they, they got to be crazy. Are you high? Come on. Yeah. But again, I don't want you to be discouraged because God doesn't show everybody what he shows you. David obviously had some faith in God, in himself as well, that, oh, I can beat Goliath. And I want to tell somebody tonight that you got to believe in you when nobody else believes in you. Come on. Even people who are close to you, you have to believe in you even when other people do not believe in you. Saul said, you just young. You just a youth, Saul said. Yeah, you ain't got enough experience, David. You haven't lived on this earth long enough, David. Here it is. Your breath still smell like Similac, David. How many of y'all have heard that at one point in your life? You still wet behind the ears. Your breath still smelling like Similac. Come on, some of you have had some elders, some people in your life who like, oh, you too young to do that. Come on. And see, here it is. This is one of the reasons why we got to have spirit-filled adults. Yeah. This is one of the reasons why spirit-filled adults are so critical to the formation of our children's faith. Because watch this. When you're spirit-filled, the Lord will reveal what's faith and what's foolish. Yeah. God will show you what should be approved and what should be abandoned when you're spirit-filled. Holy Spirit will confirm what's reckless and what's righteousness. And so I need y'all to celebrate. I, come on, I need y'all to celebrate our youth workers at New Life. Yeah, because they have this tall task of helping to shape and form the faith of our children, y'all. Yeah, what they speak into our kids' life is directly impacting an entire generation. Have y'all thought about that? Yeah, some of our kids, the only time they hear about God is when they come to kids' life when they come to God's warriors, when they go to the youth classes at New Life. Come on, y'all. Sometimes it's the only time they hear about it. And so our youth workers, they're critical to shaping and forming the faith of our children. I need y'all to just shout them out in the chat. Come on, the folks who teach your, te te who teach your kids in our youth ministry, I just need you to show them some love in the chat, y'all. Yeah. Can you imagine... If we had a whole bunch of youth workers with no discernment like Saul, who dismissed the youthfulness, the youthful faith of our kids. Can you imagine? Because that's the problem right here. Saul does not have discernment. No, not in this moment. He does not have discernment. And I just want you to think for a minute, what if our youth workers didn't have discernment? Let me just tell us tonight, y'all, that Discernment, it dictates the quality of disciples that are being made. You hear me? Discernment, it dictates the type, the, the quality of disciples that are being made. Let that sink in for a minute. The person who's leading got to have a sense of discernment. The person who's teaching, who's preaching, who's mentoring you, who's parenting you has to have a level, level of discernment to know how to move, all right? And so again, I love how our kids at New Life, y'all are being pushed and prepared to explore the gifts that God has given them. Yeah, the kids at New Life, they're being pushed and prepared to have a love for their neighbor. They're even being pushed and prepared to exercise their faith to take the city of Oakland for Jesus. Y'all not talking to me in the chat. And so what I'm saying is, adults, your faith matters. Adults, your faith matters. What you have is contagious. Just make sure it's worth catching. <clears throat> yeah. Whether you got fear or faith, both of those things are contagious. 
I need you to make sure that what you have is worth somebody catching. Saul has fear, and now he's trying to rub it off on David. David, you tripping. David, you ridiculous. David, you crazy. Come on. And all because David is young. Y'all not with me tonight. Too many adults are taking it upon themselves to frighten young people out of their youth-induced bravery. No, we are cultivating the faith at New Life. Yep, that's what we're doing. See, this is why I'm pushing for y'all to bring your children to church, y'all. Let's get back to the days, y'all remember, let's get back to the days where we brought all the neighborhood kids to church. You know how we grew up. In fact, here's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you New Life for the rest of the year. I, uh, adults, make it a priority to bring your nieces and nephews to church. Even your kids, friends in the neighborhood, at their school, on their basketball team. I want you to make a commitment to bring those kids to church every single Sunday for the rest of the year. Even if their parents don't come, you bring them. That's, that's old school. That's how we used to do it. Amen. So listen to me, New Life. New Life doesn't transform the city of Oakland into a God-loving place without the engagement and partnership with our youth. So we got to prepare them. Y'all hearing me tonight? Hear your pastor's heart tonight. New Life. Our, our vision is to take the city of Oakland for Jesus. And we are unashamed about it. But I want to tell us that in order to do that, in order to transform the city of Oakland into a God-loving place without the engagement and partnership of our youth is just crazy. We won't be able to do it. In fact, I want us to put in the chat tonight, unleash the youth. Put that in the chat tonight. Unleash the youth. Yeah, break, activate them. Let them go. Let them flow. And let, let them, they, they are so creative. We don't need you imposing your fear upon our youth. No, absolutely not. In fact, I want to tell us why it's so important to unleash the youth, y'all, because when we look throughout the throughout history, youth have always been at the forefront of every effective movement in the country. Yes, youth have been at the forefront of every effective movement. <laughs> you remember in 1960, y'all, it was the youth who led the Greensboro lunch counter city. And y'all remember that? When we look outside the United States, it was the students of South Africa who led the Soweto uprisings in 1976, y'all. Did you know that? Even when we look in the Bible, it was a young pastor named Timothy who is trusted to work alongside Paul, who is arguably the most influential apostle in the New Testament. And here young Timothy is helping the apostle disciple and shepherd one of the most complex churches in all of scripture. Y'all know what church that is. <laughs> That's the church at Corinth. And this young pastor named Timothy is trusted to come alongside the apostle Paul to disciple this church. Amen. And so all I'm saying, New Life, is that it's time to unleash our kids. Yep. What are their thoughts? about impacting Oakland? How do they feel about what should go in the impact center? How do they feel about taking the city? What ways do they see us using social media more effectively? What topics should we be discussing that we haven't touched yet? What classes do they want to lead themselves? Unleash the youth. Put that in the chat. Unleash the youth. We about to unlock the youth at New Life. They want to be spirit-filled, Holy Ghost talk, come on, tongue-talking, uh, demon-slaying youth who are unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because I understand that change is not going to happen without the youth. We need them, y'all. We need the youth. And now we see Saul right here in the text tonight. He's trying to dismiss the faith of this teenager, this teenage boy named David. And I want to submit to you that I'm tired of us as adults imposing these false limitations on our kids. 
You remember in scripture how Jesus says, and a child shall lead them. <laughs> yeah, a child shall lead them. A child shall lead them. Scripture also talk about, talks about let no one despise your youth. First Timothy 4.12, let nobody dis despise your youth. No, nobody despise your youth. And sometimes us as parents, us as adults, us as elders, us as leaders in God's church, sometimes we try to put limitations on our youth. And believe it or not, many times they are the ones with the biggest faith. <clears throat> yeah. Many times it is our youth who have the biggest faith. Amen. So one more time, I need you to put in the chat, unleash the youth. Put that in the chat. So guess what, y'all? Here it is. Guess what happened? When Saul didn't believe in David, David believed in himself. <laughs> yeah. When Saul did not believe in David, David believed in himself. This teenager, he said, this adult doesn't believe in me, but I believe in myself. I'm only a teenager, 15 years old. This grown man, the person who's my leader, by the way, he don't believe in me, but I believe in myself. And Saul said, you know what, David, you tripping. And in so many ways, David says, no, you tripping, Saul. Look at the text, verse 34. Verse 34, he says, but David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, look at verse 35. He says, I go after it and I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. This is David. All right. We don't think he's prepared for leadership, right? We don't think he's prepared to fight nobody, but this is David. And he says, I have done this to both lions and bears. I'm not new to this, I'm true to this, <laughs> okay? And I'll do it to this pagan Philistine. Yeah, for he has defied the armies of the living God. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? Okay, no, who saw that? <laughs> Raise your hand in the chat if you saw that. Did you just see that? <laughs> um. I don't know who needs to hear this tonight, y'all, but there are times that require for you to restate your resume to remind people you're a real one. Yep. Sometimes you got to rehearse your own resume. Sometimes you got to repeat your own resume just to remind people that you're the one. Yeah. Because God will often place you in situations where you got to remind people that you're the real deal. Yep, I know you're doubting me, but let me recap what I've already accomplished. <laughs> With no support from my family, this is what I've done. With no financial aid, here's what I've accomplished. With nobody believing in me, here's what I did. So in spite of Saul's doubt, David took the time and made his case for accepting Goliath's chain. He says, no, I'm going to do this. I believe in me. And here's what got me, y'all. David says in verse 34 and 35 that whenever a lion or a bear came after one of the lambs, he said, I went after it. Hmm. This is a lion and a bear. This ain't a cat. This ain't a mouse. This is a lion and a And David says, I went after it. Did y'all see that? Do I got to put it back up there for you? He says, I go after it. And I go after it with a club to rescue the lamb from its mouth. And if the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw. <laughs> David ain't scared. This dude is not scared. No wonder David has so much confidence against Goliath. Do y'all see that? That's why he got so much confidence to fight against Goliath. Family, can I just tell you something real quick? Um, don't allow present circumstances to make you forget how past conflicts prepared you for your current challenges. Yeah, you went through some stuff in the past that prepared you for where you are right now. 
Hey, Amen. Come on. If you just take a jog down memory lane, you'll see how the hard way you grew up, it prepared you for the recession. Yeah, it did. You, you, you knew how to make the adjustment. You knew how to make just a can of beans last three or four, three or four days. Come on, y'all. You'll even see if you take a, mem- a jog down memory lane, you'll see how the failed relationship showed you how to handle the current relationship that you're in right now. Yeah. You'll see how your former work environment prepared you for this current crisis that you're in. I guess what I'm trying to tell somebody tonight, y'all, is that you're built for this. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You are built for this. And whatever your this is, you're built for it, baby. (laughs) Yeah. If you look close enough, you'll see that God was preparing you for this moment all along. I mean, you didn't understand it at the time. You thought you were just doing something in the meantime, you know, working this temp job in the meantime. You even thought that God was treating you unfairly. You said, why me, God? Why do I got to go through all this? But guess what? God saw your future and used your past to prepare you for it. Amen. Beloved, what if I told you that you are built? for the thing that was sent to break you. Oh, that's good. You are built for the thing that was sent to break you. Yeah, it's not going to break you because you're built for it. I don't know what it is. I don't care how long you've been dealing with it. I don't care how rough it's been. It's not going to break you because you were built for it. I need somebody to put it in the chat. I'm built for this. Come on, whatever you're going through, put that in the chat tonight. I'm built for this. David has been fighting lions and bears. He's definitely built for this moment to fight this giant named Goliath. But here's the question. Why is David so adamant about fighting Goliath? I know he fought lions and bears. I know he would go go after the lions and bears if they took the sheep. But why is he so adamant about fighting Goliath? What does the Bible say? Let's look at it, y'all. Let's look at it. It says, I have done this both to lions and bears, and I'll do it again to this pagan Philistine, for he has defied the armies of the living God. Okay, you missed it. Look at that last part, that last part in the text. Look at the last part in that verse. For he has defied the armies of the living God. Y'all see that? David gives a reason why he's about to put hands on Goliath, y'all. He says, because Goliath has defied the armies of the living God. Now, come here, because that don't really mean much to many of us who are tuning in tonight. Because we don't make it a habit of defending God when people disrespect our God. (laughs) Yeah. But David different, y'all. David beats up bears. David lynches lions. David runs after predators. He doesn't run from them. He different. So he's definitely not going to tolerate anybody disrespecting the Lord. Y'all see that? (laughs) See, y'all, for most of our lives, even growing up as kids, this story has always been positioned as David versus Goliath. You remember Sunday school? Yeah. You remember Sunday school? You remember vacation Bible school? They've always positioned this story as David versus Goliath. Well, family, if you just look a little bit closer, this has greater implications than just David and Goliath. And I need you to pay attention right here. This was a spiritual battle. Yeah. This was a spiritual battle. Let me explain. And I need to explain culture and context real quick so you can understand the content of what I mean. See, back then the thought was whoever won the battle it would symbolize that their God was the most powerful. So when David heard and saw how Goliath 
had disrespected and in essence um, disregarded the army of the living God. OK, he took that personal. Listen, David viewed Goliath's taunt as an affront to the living God. Y'all not hearing me tonight. See, David wasn't fighting Goliath because he was mean mugging him. No, they, they, they weren't fighting. David isn't fighting because Goliath stepped on his all white air Jesuses. <laughs> Y'all not hearing me. The fight wasn't even primarily about Goliath being from a different neighborhood because y'all know how we how we are or perhaps how we used to be. Don't look at me wrong. Don't step on my J's and what hood you from? Come on. Well, David ain't fighting him because of none of that. No, it's because Goliath was disrespectful towards the Lord. Okay, y'all not hearing me. How many of us take our faith in God that serious? <laughs> yeah. How many of us are prepared to defend the reputation of God? <laughs> yeah. And I'm not focusing on physical defense, y'all. But who is serious about being clothed in the full armor of God that you may be able to withstand the deceit and cons of the enemy? New Life, I want to say to you, like the Apostle Paul said to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians 6, 14, he says, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, he says, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Ephesians 6, 17 says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And verse 18 says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Amen. Come here. Because whether we like it or not, the enemy is acting just like Goliath. Can you hear me? Whether you want to fight or not, the enemy, the devil, he's acting just like Goliath. He's roaming around seeking someone to devour. Amen. And can I tell you a fight will find you? Yes. A fight will find you. Y'all remember, David's not initially looking for a fight. David is only there to feed, not to fight. His daddy sent him. You remember his daddy sent him to go feed the soldiers. And now here comes David. He's now fighting as if he is a soldier. Y'all not hearing me. A fight will find you whether you're ready for it or not. Amen. Because we know that the enemy is roaming around like a roaring lion seeking somebody to devour. Yeah. And so in Ephesians, Paul essentially says, he says, don't get caught slipping. He says, put on the whole armor of God. New Life, I want to tell you, this ain't a game. The Christian walk is not a game. This is a spiritual battle. And you got to be prepared, y'all, to defend your family, to defend your marriage, to, to, to defend those in the faith. Yeah. And the old saints, they tried to tell us back in the days. Back in Sunday school, back in vacation Bible school, the old saints tried to tell us, but we ignored them because the song was born. Y'all know what song I'm talking about. We are soldiers in the army. We've got to fight, although we got to cry. Come on, y'all. We got to hold up the bloodstained banner. We have to hold it up until we die. Come on, y'all remember that song? And y'all will march. <laughs> the old saints tried to tell us with this song. We didn't want to listen because we thought it was boring. We thought it was corny. But we are soldiers in the army of the Lord, y'all. Yes, we are. And we got to be prepared to fight at all times. And here comes David. Not sent to fight. He's sent to feed. 
but because he heard and saw how Goliath was disrespecting God, he says, oh, no, I got to do something about this. No, you ain't about to be talking about my God like that. Amen. No, you, you ain't about to be doing that. So pay attention, y'all, because David isn't just a shepherd. He's also now a soldier. Amen. And he's a soldier who has faith in God. In fact, what David says next, y'all, it brings clarity and it makes everything come together as to why he has so much confidence and faith. Look at verse 37. It, it tells us why he has so much confidence. Look at it. It says, the Lord oh, who rescued me from the claws of the lion. So David is telling us, I didn't do this in my own strength. I did not do this with my own might. I did not do this with my own power. Instead, verse 37, the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. And look what Saul did. Saul finally, he says, all right, then go ahead. Yep, you bringing up the Lord's name. If the Lord telling you, just go ahead and do it then. Amen. So here it is. When David accepts the challenge to fight Goliath, he wasn't being cocky. He was being confident in God. All right. David identifies the source of his strength, y'all. And can I tell you who it is? It's the Lord. David trusted the Lord because the Lord had already proven himself to be trustworthy. Yeah, already. Church, hasn't God been good to you already? Come on. Hasn't he shown you how incredible he is? Hasn't God made ways for you in the past? Well, guess what? That same God is trustworthy right now. I'm talking about in your right now circumstances. That same God from your past, he's with you right now. Watch this. And because of that truth, you can never be counted out. No, anything is possible with God on your side. In fact, I want to tell you tonight, y'all, that miracles are possible wherever God is and God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. Yeah, we serve a God who never sleeps nor slumbers. Amen. In fact, I got to tell somebody tonight, y'all, that if God is going to be up tonight, you might as well go to sleep. Yep. Ain't no sense of you stand up worrying and stressing and stand up agonizing about what's going on in your life. Is God, if God is going to be up, you might as well go to sleep. Let God be God because he can handle it. Amen. Somebody put that in the chat. He can handle it. So here it is. I'm about to let you go. But David's not afraid of Goliath because his trust is in the Lord. Now, remember last week we said that the future king he arrives as an unlikely hero. Unlikely because David is just a teenager. Unlikely because David isn't even sitting on the throne just yet. But now we see that the future king trusts in the Lord for victory. Not his weapons, but the Lord. Yeah, not his armor, but the Lord. Not his own strength, but the future king, David that is, he trusts in the Lord for victory. Too many of us are putting our trust in worldly things, this worldly system, your money, your job, other people, your guns, come on, your skill set. God says don't trust none of that. None of that can be trusted. David is telling us tonight that the best thing we can do is trust in the Lord for victory. And so the question tonight is, who do you trust? Yeah. Come on, I know what your mouth say, but who do you trust? I know what Christian culture has indoctrinated you to say, but for real, for real, who do you trust? Now watch David's faith in action. I'm almost done, y'all. I'm gonna let y'all go. I gotta get this out. Stay with me. Stay with me, y'all. Rock with your boy. Look at this. Look at David's faith in action. The Bible says that then Saul gave David his own armor a bronze helmet, and a coat of mail. Verse 39 says that David put it on. He strapped the sword over it and took a step or two to see what it was like. He says, I can't go in these. He protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took it off. 
Y'all not with me tonight. Y'all see that? Saul gives David his armor. Y'all see that? He tries to give David his armor. Why? Perhaps because this is what Saul was used to his whole life when he went into battle. Y'all not with me. You see that? When Saul won, these are the same clothes that Saul would wear. And now he's giving them to David. And David tries them on and takes them right off. He says, this ain't going to work for me. Church, let me tell you tonight, y'all, that some tools for success are not easily transferable. Yeah. Some tools for success are not easily transferable. See, what works for them may not work for you. Am I right about it? What works for them may not work for you. And you got to advocate for yourself like David and say, thank you, but no thank you. Yeah, th this don't fit me. Y'all not hearing me tonight. Th this doesn't fit what God wants to do for me. Yeah, this doesn't fit where God is taking me in my family. This does not fit my character. This doesn't fit the calling that's on my life. Thank you, but no thank you, baby. Now notice, y'all, that David takes off Saul's armor. You got to remember that David is just a teen boy. So he hasn't even grown into his adult body. On the other hand, Saul is a grown man. He's tall, he's fit, and his armor is designed to fit him. In other words, Saul's armor was just plain old too heavy. A grown man's armor customized for him, is now placed on this teenage shepherd boy. And David takes it off. It was too heavy. It kind of looked like um, some of Kanye's oversized clothes. Y'all don't know how Kanye be wearing some crazy stuff, be way too big. That's how David looked in Saul's armor, y'all. It was just plain old too heavy. Ah! I gotta let you go. But let me ask you, y'all. What's your carrying capacity? <laughs> what is your carrying capacity? David says, Saul, you gave me this armor, but I can't fit it. It's too big. It's too heavy. I'm asking you tonight, what's your carrying capacity? <laughs> huh, okay. I feel cyber side eyes. Anybody remember how when you go on the elevator, there's actual a weight limit on the elevator? I mean, it's posted plain as day in every single elevator. There's a weight limit. Yeah. And even though the elevator is designed to take you to your desired floor, it won't go anywhere, y'all, if what's inside the elevator is over the limit. If it's too heavy, y'all. There it is. Let me tell you tonight that some of you are carrying far too much in order to win. You can't win. No, nope. you're carrying too much. You're carrying too much in order to get to the victory, y'all. You're carrying too much to walk confidently in your calling. You're just carrying too much. Amen. And here's your choices. You can either stay there being stuck wearing Saul's armor. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, stuck holding on to more than you can handle or you can let some things go family before you confront this next giant in your life before you even confront this next challenge before you go on this next mission i need you to ask yourself what do i need to let go of <laughs> yeah whose stuff am i carrying that's not mine to carry yeah Whose clothes are too big for me? Whose shoes are too big for me? What's my carrying capacity? Do I have enough mental space? Do I have enough emotional energy? What's your carrying capacity? David says, if I'm going to be Goliath, if I'm going to win this battle, if I'm going to come out on top, I can't do it wearing Saul's armor. No, 
Family, I want you to remind yourself that I will never win by pretending to be somebody else. He says, I got to take this off. It doesn't fit me. This is what he used to win the war. But that ain't mine. Nope. I need you to remind yourself that I will never win by pretending to be someone else. New life, you're enough. Yes, you are. You are enough. How God made you is enough. Who he made you to be is enough. Think about how uniquely God has gifted you, how he wired you, your skill set, your faith, your trust. It is enough. And God's going to use what you currently have to bring you the victory. You don't have to wear nobody else's armor. You don't have to do it like anybody else did it. I want you to do it how God showed you how to do it. And watch victory be yours. Amen, somebody. Amen. The victory is yours. Somebody put that in the chat tonight. Victory is mine. Yeah. Put that in the chat. Victory is mine. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray y'all were blessed by tonight. I pray that something touched you. It's time to move your faith to a whole nother level of new life. God is with you just like he was with David. Amen. I want to give us an opportunity to give tonight. Y'all did real good last Sunday. Let's keep that going, y'all. Every single week, trusting God. Yeah, trusting God uh, with our money. Trusting God with our tithe and with our offering. You see the ways right there to give. Give generously tonight. We're back at it this Sunday at 1030 a.m. You heard the challenge during our study tonight. I'm looking for you adults for the remainder of the year to bring your kids to church and not just your friends, but bring your nieces and nephews, bring your godchildren, bring those kids that are on your kids' sports teams, football teams, basketball teams. Even if their parents don't come, I want you to bring them so that their faith can be cultivated. Yeah, we don't need any saws imposing their fear on our ki on our kids nope we want to build their faith up amen and new life is the place to do it. we have some phenomenal youth leaders who are building up our children's faith so again accept the challenge accept the challenge accept the challenge i want you to accept the challenge and bring your kids and their friends and family members to church for the remainder of the year can we do that y'all Come on, can we do that? Let us do this. All right, so I'll see y'all uh, Sunday. All right, we'll be back at it Sunday, 1030 a.m. Bring somebody with you. It's going up. And thank you again, everybody, for the birthday love. I appreciate it. Again, my actual birthday is tomorrow. My actual birthday is tomorrow. Your boy is going to be 41. Can y'all believe it? 41. And I got these gray hairs popping. But it's all good. Let me tell y'all. Let me just tell y'all something real quick. Just real quick, real quick. Um, my kids disrespectful. Yeah, my kids are disrespectful, and they're disrespectful, y'all, because they make fun of me and be like, "Dad, you was born in the 1900s." Oh, it vexes my spirit. Anybody else kids do that? They call me old. And it makes me feel old when they say I was born in the 1900s. They better watch their mouth. They better watch their mouth. You born in the 1900s. What do you mean the 1900s? Yeah. Even though technically they right, but y'all get what I'm saying. Y'all feel me. Hey, man. 1900s. I'm going to have to check them. Yours too, tell? Yeah. Yeah. We got to stop all that. They dis These kids nowadays just disrespectful. Talking about the 1900s. Yeah. Anyways, y'all have a phenomenal night. I love y'all. Walk in victory because victory is yours. God bless your people. May the rest of their week be blessed. May they have victory over whatever they are confronted with this week, Lord God. Help them to overcome and help them realize, God, that victory is in Christ Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, y'all. Repeat after me, my lifestyle is my greatest witness. My lifestyle 
is my greatest witness. Last time, y'all, my lifestyle, it is my greatest witness. Peace. I love y'all, family. Have a good night.